Hey there, I'm here to talk about the next wave in sales and marketing. So my name is David Cancel. I'm a five-time founder, two-time CEO, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Drift. And I'm going to tell you about Drift, but before I go into that, I'll tell you a little bit about my background, which is before Drift, I was Chief Product Officer of HubSpot, uh, left there about the time that we went public, and uh, got there through an acquisition of my company, Performable. And before that, I spent pretty much my entire career building marketing and sales software. And this will become relevant uh, later in the presentation. So five to 10 years ago, right, sales and marketing teams were focused on one thing, right? Only one thing. And this is all we talked about. And when I was building software for sales and marketing teams, this is all they wanted to focus on. And that one thing was trying to figure out how to attract website visitors to their websites. So everyone had gone off and had built websites for their businesses. And, uh, but then they had business websites that didn't have anyone visiting them. So they were worried about, how do I get someone to my website? And so much of it was around trying to get people to come via ads, come via word of mouth, or come via content. And we spent really the last five to 10 years trying to hone this in. And these were the type of questions that we would ask all the time. How do I rank higher in search? How frequently should I be posting to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, you know, Foursquare, whatever it was? How do I target an ad? You know, how do I, you know, how do I become an SEO wizard? How do I, you know, uh, target Facebook ads or social ads or LinkedIn ads or Google ads? And these were the type of questions that we all asked. But nobody sitting here today asks these questions anymore. Everyone has figured out how to write a blog post. And if they don't know how to write a blog post, they know how to find someone who can write a blog post for them, right? So you can go out and outsource that. Writing a blog post, as silly as it sounds today, was so freaking difficult 10 years ago. Nobody understood how to write a blog post. They had heard about WordPress or a different content system and figured out how to create a blog, but they didn't know what to write about the blog. And then they didn't know how to rank in, on Google or rank in Facebook on the news feed. And no one asks these questions anymore. This is a solved problem now. Getting people to your website, turning your website into a magnet is something that we've all figured out how to do, right? And that was really what I think about as the first wave of sales and marketing. But that wave has roared past us, right? There's no more arbitrage opportunity on that end of the cycle, right? Arbitrage goes away by definition over time. And the arbitrage opportunity in trying to rank better than someone else is still there, but it's tiny little percentage points. It's not a huge opportunity anymore. But it's left a lingering question, I believe, in the wake, right? And it's like, what do we do with all of these people once we figured out how to get them to our website? We've worked hard. We figured out how to write the right blog posts, how to write the right medium publication, how to do well on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, etc., etc. How to uh, how to create that content and get it to the right decision maker. We figured all that stuff out, but what do we do once they actually get to our website? So this is what we do, right? And this is what I spent most of my career building, including all of my time at HubSpot and Performable before starting Drift. It looks a lot like this. And if you look at this graphic, I bet a lot of you will nod your head and say like, this looks familiar, right? And this is the best in class approach for marketing and sales teams for B2B businesses in the world. Whether you're a top you know, 100 company, Fortune 100 company in the world, or you're a small B2B uh, manufacturer, this is what we do. We get someone to land on your website, right? And we do that regardless, whether it's through content or ads or word of mouth or, or email or whatever, whatever approach you use, we figure out how to attract them, get them to your website, and then we have one mechanism for capturing that intent, and that is we get them to fill out a form. And I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of filling out forms. I don't want to come to your website and answer 15 questions about uh, what's my job title, what's my email address, what's my phone number, what problems do I have, etc., etc., just to download an ebook or video from your website. So you fill out the form, you become a lead in a CRM, then you get a nurturing email from that company, then you get a second nurturing email, then you get a third nurturing email, 
and over and over and over again you get all these emails spamming your inbox because all you wanted to do was learn a little bit about this business. At some point, and you don't know how this happens, you magically become qualified, right? And that's based on some algorithm that that company has created uh, through some vendor and they qualify you because maybe you've opened enough emails or you've visited their website enough times or you come from the right big company uh, when you and you enter that into the input field of one of those forms and then what happens now your name gets passed over to a salesperson and now that salesperson tries to schedule a call or a demo with you in order to sell you whatever it is that they make and how do they do this well they start sending you more emails and we've all gotten these emails of hey just 15 minutes hey I heard you were interested in the software hey you happen to be by our website and they'll start pounding you with even more emails this time coming from the sales rep or multiple sales reps and then eventually they'll send you more emails if you respond to those in order to connect and schedule a meeting and then you will finally talk to them that scenario which I just described is the best-in-class approach whether you're a fortune 100 company or a small b2b company this is the only marketing and sales motion that we know today but think about that I got to step away from creating that software spending the last 20 years creating software like that and now I look at that and I think wow it's so crazy because what we're effectively doing by doing that is we're spending all of our energy trying to get someone to pay attention to us and then we try to drive them to our website think about the think about the website as a store right a physical store in your neighborhood so we stand outside we jump up and down we get excited we get people interested and then we get them to come to the into the store but when they walk in the store aka your website there is no one there there is no one there to greet them there is no one there to sell to them they're on their own and what do they have to do now? Now they have to walk around your store or browse around your website and know enough to fill out one of your forms with 10 to 15 fields on there or maybe you're smart and you have less fields and they fill out a form and then they leave. Right? That's the equivalent of getting someone to come into your store spending all of those marketing dollars trying to get their attention and when they walk in the store they look around and all they see is a book that says leave your information your email address your company size your etc etc that book is the is the equivalent of your form fill that out and then leave the store and then we the business owner are now going to spend weeks if not months trying to get you re-engaged to come back to the store when it's convenient for us to sell to you Think about that. That is insane. But that is what we're all doing in the B2B world today. So we think it's obviously a terrible experience for buyers, but it's also a terrible experience for the sales and marketing teams who will inevitably argue and disagree, right? Because we're putting the, our prospects through this terrible experience, right? These co potential customers who are coming in the door, we're treating them terribly. We're not getting back to them. We're not giving them a clue of how long it will be before we respond to their inquiry about wanting to know more about our software or possibly purchasing our software. So what happens? And I'm sure this has happened to lots of you because it's happened in almost every company that I've been associated with or I've been an investor or an advisor in. And this is what happens. Sales and marketing start to argue. And sales says, these leads are garbage. Get us the good leads, get us the Glen Gary leads. And they're yelling at the marketing team saying, why aren't you doing a better job? Why aren't you getting me better leads? And the marketing team says, these leads aren't garbage. You're garbage. You're not following up with the leads. I'm bringing you leads every month. I'm bringing you great leads. But you, sales team, are not following up with these leads. And the infighting continues and the finger pointing continues. And, and we try to figure out ways to make this work. But this is what happens. And then to deal with this problem as a business, we typically just throw more money at it. So if you look at this, this is your sales funnel, right? And think about it. Right now, there are only two levers for you to get more out of this funnel. 
and it is you will spend more money at the top of the funnel to pay for more traffic, whether that's through content that you write, so you have to pay writers to do that, or through uh, advertising that you buy, or through emails that you send, or through trade shows that you uh, attend. All of those cost money, so you're spending more money at the top of the funnel to get more out of the out of that funnel, more sales, more customers out of the funnel, or and or you're spending more at the bottom of the funnel because you're hiring more sales reps because you're n this funnel is not getting you the dollars that you need. But think about this for a minute. We spend a fortune convincing people to talk to us. But when they actually do want to talk to us and they come to our website and they're ready to talk to us and we've made them interested, we think it's too expensive, too inconvenient, doesn't scale, we don't have time for it, and we basically turn them away at the door. When we spend all this energy getting them in the store, we basically tell them to leave, and we hope for the best. As a result of this, our conversion rates suffer, and if we look at the benchmark data from, in this case from Salesforce, we see that our lead to opportunity uh, conversion rates are not, are not that great, 13% on average, and 84 days have to pass to convert that. And then from an opportunity to do a deal, there's a 6% average conversion rate, even worse, and it takes 18, an additional 18 days to convert. Awful experience for the business, awful experience for the customer. And even if you're best in class at doing this antiquated approach, right, there's one thing that you're not doing, you're not responding to leads in real time. And research shows that a response time of five minutes or less is the sweet spot, right? So we look at this data from, in this case, Harvard Business Review and InsideSales.com. And what they found is that there's a 10 X decrease in the odds of making contact with a lead after the first five minutes. So think, they come to your website, they fill out that antiquated form that you have, and now if you don't respond to them within five minutes, there's a 10x decrease in the odds of making contact. That's incredible. And even if you respond within 10 minutes versus five minutes, there's a 400% decrease in your odds of qualifying that lead. So as we know, this is, comes as no surprise to any of us. We live in an on-demand, real-time world. We don't, have, we don't have time. We don't have minutes and hours and days to wait around for some business to get back to us. But instead of figuring out how to bring our response times down, here's what most of us have just been treading water. So we know the problem. We know the experience sucks. right? We wouldn't put up with that experience in our normal lives, even though we do it at the businesses that we work for. And instead of figuring out how do we make this a better customer experience, most of us have just been treading water. So instead of evolving away from those old tactics, we keep doubling down on the old tactics. More forms, more calls, more nurturing emails. More forms, more calls, more nurturing emails. I don't know about you, but I don't fill out many forms. I never answer my phone. And I don't reply or pay attention to most nurturing emails. But this is what we're doubling down. And I bet you're a lot like me and you don't answer your phone if you don't know who it is, and you're not spending a lot of time filling out 15 field forms, and you don't spend a lot of time reading nurturing emails, but yet when you go to work each day, these are the tactics that you're dumbling down on and expecting great performance out of them. And as Uncle Einstein would tell us, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And we know it is insane to double down on more phone calls more emails and more forms and expecting better performance because none of us in the way that we live each day, the way that we live and the way that we want to buy, want to do any of those things or be exposed to those things. So when we built Drift, we got this chance to start with a blank slate. So I had this 20 years of experience. I had this, we started the company. I had this uh, ability to start from a blank slate, which is a great luxury that many people don't have. So we decided to define a new playbook here. We call it Fastlane. And the reason we call it Fastlane is because with the old approach of forms and nurturing emails and taking weeks, if not months, to get back to a prospect, to a potential customer, the old way is about getting leads, building up a lot of demand, getting them to your website, getting them to fill out forms, and then they just wait around. And the way that we think about Fastlane is that we want leads to flow right through, get to all the content they need without filling out any forms, and get instantly connected to a sales rep if they need to. 
and if they want to. And we soon realized that making Fastlane a reality, we had to do one thing. And we talked about this a while back, which was uh, on our blog, so you should check that out. And we did this thing which we called killing all of our lead forms. So if you go to Drift, you'll see that there are no 15 field lead forms. We refuse to gate any of our content. All of our eBooks, videos, everything that we produce is freely available. We require no one ever to fill out a form. And we create this movement around no more forms, right? And if you would like a sticker like that, like one of our no form stickers, just send us a note. Send me a note, david at drift.com, and, uh, and I will hook you up with a set of those stickers, right? They're, they've become pretty popular recently. And, uh, but I know what you're thinking. You're, you're probably starting to freak out. If you're in charge of demand gen for your company and, uh, or feeding the BDRs or the sales reps, you're probably going to freak out about killing the lead forms because that is the tool that you have today in order to get your leads. So you're wondering, how the hell am I going to get my leads if I don't have my lead forms? Well, we have a secret that we discovered, and that secret is we use conversations to capture leads. So think about it. A conversation is a more natural form, uh, way to capture a lead. So imagine walking in the store and you're talking with someone and they're helpful and they're giving you answers uh, to your questions and they're actually providing value, you're more apt to provide them with your information. Rather than forcing you to come into the store, fill out a kiosk with all of your personal information before they even bother to look at you, respond to you, or talk to you. Right? It's just a more natural human way to connect and to capture that intent. And here's why I think this worked. Right? The reason that conversations has really worked for us and has given us the ability to throw out those lead forms is that billions of people around the world are now using messaging as their default communication means. Right? And so when I reach out to my daughter who's 11, my wife, my colleagues at Drift, uh, friends, investors, etc., it almost always starts over some form of messaging app. That has become the new normal, right? I have lived through every wave of messaging that you see here. I was a user of IRC and ICQ back in 1996, AOL, Yahoo, MSN Messenger, Skype, Gtalk, all of these things that you see here, I used them all before. So messaging is not new. The technology behind messaging is not new at all. What's different though is in the last five years, those messaging apps have gone from a subscale of tens of millions of users to hundreds of millions of users with something like Skype or Windows Live Messenger to billions of users around the world almost overnight. And that change and that paradigm shift has led us to find a new normal way of communicating, which is over messaging, where 10 years ago, messaging was for geeks like myself and people in technology. It wasn't for every, everyone around the world. And now messaging is the default way that people communicate around the world. And it's not for just for, for younger people. Right? If you look at the share of usage of time spent in the top five email and messaging apps, this is on phones, uh, you'll see that, no surprise, for younger people between 13 and 24, most of them spend all their time in messaging right? versus email. If you look at 25 to 44, you see still messaging is winning there, which is surprising. right? And then really surprising to many of us is if you look at 45 plus, you'll see that messaging and email are almost neck and neck. That's amazing. And this, these are figures as of 2015. I would bet that those messaging numbers are way higher now in 2017. Totally amazing to see. So why are so many companies still selling like messaging doesn't exist? Today, our buyers are tired of getting phone calls. Do you answer phone calls from random sales reps that you don't know? I bet you don't. I never do, right? Are you sick of sorting through emails like this, chains from uh, sales reps or from companies that you've never contacted, you don't know who they are, maybe you filled out a form a month ago, you can't even remember the num name of the company, but now you're getting barraged by emails. How many of you are sick of this? I'm sick of this. And we're also fed up with this, which is filling out forms. I don't want to give you all this information before you provided value to me. And I don't know why I'm giving it to you, and I don't know what to expect when I give it to you. I don't know if I'm going to get emails, phone calls, or uh, m 
emails from our, your sales team, your marketing team, and what have you. I don't know what's going to happen when I give you this information. And so as an entrepreneur who's been building software for sales and marketing teams for 20 years, I'm here to tell you now that the second wave is here, right? You need to catch the wave or it's going to go past you and it's going to be hard to catch up and something is going to break in the way that most of us uh, are doing sales and marketing today with forms, more calls, more emails. So to understand how bad the problem was, we did a, sur a secret shopper survey at Drift. So we went out and found that 433 of the top B2B SaaS companies in the world. And we wanted to see how long would it take them if we went to their website during normal business hours, not on holidays, not late at night, uh, and we actually filled out the form that they had that let us indicate that we wanted to buy something. So we raised our hands. We went to these websites and we stood there and said, I want to buy something from you. And we wanted to see how long would it take for them to get back to us. And here's what we found. 55% of the companies took longer than five days or they didn't even bother to respond to us. Think about that. 55% of the companies either took more than five days to even respond to our inquiry to want to buy something during normal business hours or they didn't respond at all. And I'll tell you that most of them did not respond at all, right? And even the best in class, 30, only 32 out of that 800 plus responded within five minutes and almost all of those were a canned email that was not a connection to a real person. So 93% of the sales teams we surveyed failed to respond within five minutes. These are the same sales teams that are telling you they don't have enough leads, they don't have enough pipeline. 93% of them failed to respond within five minutes. And if we go back to the HBR source, we know that there's a 10x decrease in your odds of making contact with a lead after the first five minutes. And that even if you respond uh, within 10 minutes as a versus five minutes, there's a 400% decrease in your odds of qualifying that lead. So as a sales and marketing organization, what are you supposed to do? How do you adapt your demand gen and selling process to 2017? So here are the options. Here are two options I wanna leave you with. One, create a new, get a new net to fish with. So if we think about that lead form on the website, I think about that as a net because you're driving people to the top of the funnel and you only have one net in order to catch them. And that net is a form. But we think there's a new net you can place forms with. So at Drift, we realized with the rise in messaging, we had the opportunity to create a new sales funnel, right? And so we enabled this new methodology to enable real-time selling that we call Capture, Qualify, Connect. And Capture is about turning anonymous visitors into leads. And we do that through messaging. And then turning leads to opportunities, and we do that through the intelligence of our bots that are built into our messaging platform. And then finally, turning opportunities into customers, and we do that by real by connecting qualified opportunities to the right reps at the right time within your company. And so instead of forms and follow-ups, we use intelligent bots to capture and qualify leads. This is an example. You can go to our website right now, and you can play with our bot actually on our website and see how we capture and qualify leads. And we also use bots for booking demos and meetings. So we have our bots who work 24-7, 365, right? They work longer than your sales teams or your BDRs can today to assist those sales teams and BDRs by scheduling demos and meetings for them when they're away busy talking to a prospective customer or at home sleeping uh, because it's late at night. But hey, if you think it's too radical, to take that massive plunge and get rid of all your lead forms, don't worry, we have another option for you, and that is option two, which is to use that new net of messaging in addition to keeping your old net. So, And this is what a lot of our customers are doing. This is the easiest way to start and to not give up that habit of those old lead forms. And we're going to show you an example of a real customer. I want you to meet Guillaume. Guillaume is the Vice President of Growth at a company called Segment, which is a fast-growing company in San Francisco. Guillaume recently added a second net to, his, to Segment's website. And so if you go to Segment's website, you'll see that you still have your traditional form. You still have the ability to request a demo, so he didn't get rid of that. The, the website still looks like your normal B2B uh, website. But you'll see down on the lower right-hand side, you'll see 
the face of one of their actual sales reps and a message that has been personalized for me coming from Drift. And what Guillaume is doing is he is using Drift to target only the top. He's using basically an account-based marketing approach. He's only targeting the top 1,000 companies in the world that he wants to that he thinks are a good fit for their enterprise plan versus their premium plan, and he has Drift set up so that the right rep who's assigned to that lead shows up on the website with a message that's personalized for that company. In this case, it's a message personalized for me coming to as a as a Drift employee. And if you remove Drift, you see that it's your standard B2B website. No big change. But because of that second net that Guillaume has add, added to his website, he has more than doubled the number of qualified leads that they generate each month. And we've gone from a project that he was just trying out in the beginning of this year to being the number one channel and way that they're driving opportunities uh, to their sales team. And that's led to thousands of dollars in incremental MR and pipeline each month, not by spending any more at the top of the funnel and not by hiring any more sales reps at the bottom of the funnel, those two things stayed the same. What changed was instead of just having one net to capture a demand, Guillaume now has two nets. So if they don't fill out the form, there's a good chance that they will engage with the personalized message that's coming from a real human through Drift. And of course, all of the sales reps now love Guillaume. Right? So I know what you're thinking. Right? You saw what Drift looks like and you're thinking, wait, isn't this just chat? I've seen chat before, I've seen, uh, maybe I've tried chat and it didn't work well and I've seen stuff like this before. But before you, you, you go down that road, I want you to think about, I want to talk to you about three things that chat doesn't give you, that Drift gives you. Chat does not give you the ability to capture, be a proactive concierge, in our case, our Drift bot, to capture intent and capture a lead, right? 24-7, 365 days a year. Chat does not give you the ability to qualify those leads using your customized qualification questions and rules and an ability to fine-tune control who that is being targeted at, right? And then three, chat does not give you the ability to connect that person that came in, that prospect, in an intelligent way and route it to the right rep who is available at that moment uh, to talk to that person, right? That whole intelligence of routing, chat does not give you. That's what Drift gives you. And we think the future of sales and marketing is being able to control the flow of leads like you can in Drift. And if you think about it in terms of a knob, if you turn that knob all the way to the left, you basically want more leads. So you want Drift to appear all the time and you want to try to use that as a powerful second net to get as many people to fill out a form as possible. Uh, to have a converse, to fill out a form or have a conversation. Uh, and then you can start turning that wheel and say, wait a second, I don't want it targeted to everyone. I want it just behaviorally targeted. I want it bot qualified. So the bot is going to ask the n number of qualification rules that you have. Or you want to have it even more targeted, which is you want to just target a certain firm of graphics, a certain company size, a certain um, revenue size before they see drift. Or you can turn it all the way to the right and you want to target it only at a list of named accounts. And this is the account-based targeting that I talked about earlier that Guillaume does. Let's say there's only a thousand companies in the world that you ever want to talk to. You turn it all the way to the right and now Drift will only appear and only engage people who are coming from those leads that you've named. So turn the dial all the way to the right, to the left I should say and you engage with 100% of the leads and you turn it all the way to the right and you can engage with whatever small percentage of leads that you want to target. And this level, this level of control is only possible because of our use of AI and machine learning in the form of our bots, right? We need something that's able to engage with your visitors 24-7, 365, and we do that in the form of our bot through our messaging platform. And the thing, the aha moment for most individual sales reps that use Drift is this right here, right? This is the moment where it light bulb goes off for those people uh, using Drift, right? Those sales reps. And you know what happens? That sales rep gets a notification on their phone, and that notification on their phone says, 
Oh, that lead that I've been wanting to talk to, who's never replied to any of my emails or cold outreach, is actually on our website right now. And I can just swipe and start a chat with them right now. So as a sales rep, I don't no longer have to be tethered to my desk and the tools at, uh, and the tools at my desk. I can be anywhere in the world uh, at any time and get notified when that hot opportunity that I've been tracking actually showed up to do some research on our website and I can start to have a, a conversation with them right on their website in real time. When reps see, see this, their minds are blown. It's incredible to them because now they can be free to focus on the thing that they do best, which is to sell. Because the bot has done the qualification, the bot has done the routing, the bot has done most of the hard work for them, and they're called in at the last minute in order to jump in and close that sale. And they love that. So with today's tools, your sales teams will never be able to respond to every lead in five minutes. It's just not possible. By filling out a form, doing a bunch of nurturing emails, putting in a CRM, getting qualified, do this, that, and then that going into some CRM that a sales force has to log in and find that lead, they're never going to follow up with them in five minutes. But with an intelligent messaging platform like Drift, they can. Right? They can capture, qualify, and connect with those leads in real time, even when they're sleeping 24-7, 365, because of our bots and our artificial intelligence. And we think doing real-time selling is the next wave in sales and marketing. And it all starts by adding that second net to your website. Remember, it's as easy as adding a second net. You don't have to change anything. You don't need to do a redesign. You don't have to do any optimizations. You have a net that's already there. You know how it works. Why not add a second net and compare what you get from that net versus the existing net that you have today? You have nothing to lose. It's as easy as a copy and paste JavaScript onto your website. But don't just take my word for it, right? Remember that 9 out of 10 of us, we are all consumers, want to be able to use messaging and talk to the businesses, right? So the next wave of sales and marketing, we believe, looks like this. Doesn't look like that crazy chart that I showed you before, which is the best in class in sales and marketing. It looks like this. You land on a website, you interact with an intelligent messaging platform, in this case Drift, and then if you're qualified, you talk to the right person within that company. And it's all about building those connections, and it's all about real-time, enabling real-time selling in your organization. So we'll come to an end here. You've got a choice to make. You can come and drift with us, right? You can go and ride that next wave, or you're going to let it knock you over, right? The choice is yours. You can keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting the results you're getting. The results are never going to get any better because you're doing the same thing over and over. Or you can try something new. You can dip your toe in. You can take a baby step. You can add a second net, and you can see your performance double, if not triple overnight. And that's our conversation. That's our talk on Drift. And I'm available anytime. You can go to team.drift.com slash David to see my personal profile page and to message me anytime. Thank you for sitting through this. I hope uh, you add that second net to your website and you see the performance that it can bring you. Thanks.